What's up guys, Brandon here. Now today we're gonna to talk about plateaus. So a plateau in a sense with strength training, weight loss, muscle gain is when you've been working super hard, you've been training your butt off, you've been dieting strictly, you've been doing all the right things. For whatever reason, you're not seeing the results that you're expecting. Now a plateau often comes about maybe eight to 10, 12 weeks into a program or longer, right? So you're not the first, first few months into a program, once you dial all the things in, especially if you're starting for the first time, you're just going to keep seeing progress, 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 with always that caveat that you are doing your, you know, your recovery properly, your training properly, your uh, eating properly, all the things that we talk about are seven big habits, you really have those dialed in. Now, you may be doing all the right things, but you're not seeing the results that you want. So in this lesson, we're going to kind of talk about, you know, how to identify when we've hit a plateau and some of the strategies that we can implement to get through it. Now, the first thing to always accept is that we don't really have control over the outcome when it comes to fitness, right? We can control certain behaviors like logging our food, making sure that we're training, we're getting adequate sleep, those sort of things. But when it comes to, will the scale move? Will I be able to personal best or P, personal record PR my bench press or something like that? We don't necessarily have that much control. So mentally, in terms of our mindset approach, we worry about what we can control, and then we'll sort out the details later in terms of if we're not getting the right outcome, maybe we need to change strategy. But in order to stay motivated, we concentrate on the things that we have control over. So first I wanna talk about if you hit a plateau in your strength training. So say that you're shooting for a big bench press or a big squat or something like that, and you just got to a point where you keep hitting that same one rep max or the same three rep max, meaning the most weight you can do for one or three reps, over and over and over and you're not you're just not getting stronger so one simple approach is work harder so say that you've been training at like a seven out of ten intensity it may be that you need to turn up the intensity a little bit and that could look like increasing a little bit more volume in your training so doing extra sets within a workout or extra workouts within a week or increasing the intensity lifting heavier or using things like sets to failure or force reps intensity strategies to help increase the response that your body is going to have to the training. So that's one approach. Another could be that you've been doing the same thing for too long. Now there's something called the said principle and strength and conditioning, which stands for specific adaptation and imposed demand, which simply means that our bodies get really efficient at something we do regularly. So there is a point of diminishing return. Say you keep bench pressing the same weight for 10 reps. Eventually it's not going to get you any stronger. You need to do more reps or add more weight. So introducing novelty in terms of increasing the intensity, like we talked about, using different exercises, doing exercises on different days, changing up your workout routine completely in order or sequence, things like that. That is novelty that you can introduce to the program to mix things up, right? So varying the type of workouts, as long as they're still strength-based and goal-oriented, varying the exercise selection or the exercise order is another option which is also called periodizing your program, right? Where you plan your program to have peaks and valleys where you're building towards something and then pausing and then building again, almost like stepping up the ladder as you go. So a periodized program is one where you look at it, blocks of days for individual workouts, blocks of weeks, blocks of months, and even the year or more out and break the program into sections where you're focusing on one specific goal at a time. So having a good periodized program that breaks down each section into a specific goal is a way to keep making a particular type of progress without stagnating or hitting a plateau. The other thing to think about is, are you focusing on the big lifts or compound lifts or exercises that are going to give you the most bang for your buck? The ones that are going to recruit the most muscle groups and have carryover strength to every other area. Traditionally, the bench press, the squat, the overhead press and the deadlift would be four exercises that have a lot of carryover to other muscle groups. So those should be exercises if you are training for strength that you're prioritizing at the beginning of your program. So if those are coming at the end and you're wondering why you're not getting stronger, well, you need to prioritize those because the things that we train first actually have the most training effect. So prioritize those bigger lifts. One other thing that we often forget about, check other life factors. If you're sleeping four hours a night because you have a new baby, you're stressed out at work and you're not able to get your full days of worth of nutrition in, of course, you're not going to get stronger, right? Fitness is holistic. So you need to make sure that you're getting each piece lined up. So if you're not getting stronger, you first want to make sure you can check off your big seven, right? Your hydration, your sleep, your nutrition, your general movement, your stress management, all those things that are important outside of training to help with recovery. So make sure those boxes are checked. 
And lastly, you just might be at the point where you need to deload or take a week or two off. If you've been training consistently hard for say 12 to 16 weeks, even 20 weeks without really taking a real break, your body is probably screaming for recovery. Oftentimes with myself and clients, I've found that when I hit a wall or a plateau and I'm almost forced to take a break and I'm like, oh, I'm going to lose all my strength, like taking a week or two off, then I'm going to come back and it's all going to be messed up. I actually come back stronger. Typically when I go on vacation, I'll get a couple light workouts in, maybe movement or a week or two period. And then when I get back in the gym, I'm even stronger than when I left. So it's just another sign that sometimes you need to take a little rest with strength. All right. So that is strength, but we also want to focus on, oh yeah, <laughs> this is, this is a, a little bit of a overestimation, right? Sometimes when we go to, to max out, like we're, we're not feeling super good. We haven't really progressed in our, our program like we want. And we're like, well, I'm still going to go for that bench press one rep max. Hopefully this never happens to you, but yeah, power of positive thinking is not, not really uh, where it's at. You actually have to put in the work. So with strength training, those are our principles. Now it's a little bit different when it comes to weight loss. So say that you're dieting, your training's dialed in, you're making sure that you're getting sleep, you're recovering, you're doing all the things and your goal is weight loss, but you're just not getting there, right? So if dieting's not enough, like for our two guys in the bottom, you can always innovate, but we'll innovate in a way that's a little bit more effective than that. So here's the sort of hierarchy of strategies you might implement. Now, understanding what a plateau and weight loss is, traditionally, I would say if for two weeks, you don't lose weight, that would be considered a plateau, right? So we've hit a plateau. So there's a few strategies we can implement at this time. So if for one week, you don't lose weight, please don't freak out. If you don't lose weight for two weeks, also don't freak out. Don't freak out ever. Things can be changed, right? We're not as worried about the outcome. But at two weeks, we might want to start implementing some of these strategies. So the first one is simple. You don't seem to be in a calorie deficit anymore. You might've lost weight and your metabolic needs are reduced. So simply drop calories. That's the most basic version. So start with a 10% decrease at per, per week and then go from there. So second week, you don't lose weight, drop calories by 10%. Week three, maybe the scale starts moving, hold right there. Maybe it doesn't move again, drop by another 10%. So we go down incrementally like that. So option one is drop calories. Another really big question that I always ask clients because it seems obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people neglect it. How accurately are you logging your food, right? A lot of times I'll find out that people don't even own a food scale and they're putting all these precise measurements in. And I'm just like, where are these numbers coming from? You know, and they're like, well, it looks like, or it feels like. Those are the two ultimate sins when it comes to nutrition precision. It feels like, or it looks like. So make sure that you're weighing things accurately. Use grams, not ounces. Make sure that your measuring cup is not rounded at the top. You're using an actual tablespoon, not just a spoon for peanut butter and things like that. Make sure everything that you're eating is getting logged accurately, right? Data will set you free in the sense that it'll let you know exactly where you're messing up if you need to make an improvement. So honor the measurements, be accurate with them. Similarly with the strength, if you are not seeing the uh, improvements that you're hoping for from the, uh, the weight loss angle of things, then check your stress and your sleep, right? A lot of times clients will not be losing weight and we're doing everything right. We have macros dialed in, we have uh, calories dialed in. And I'll be like, what's going on in your life right now? They're like, oh, I just got a promotion. I'm working like 80 hour weeks. I haven't been sleeping. I'm super stressed out. And, and I'm just like, okay, in the back of my head, I'm like, I think I know what this is. A week will come, every input stays the same. We're working out the same, we're eating the same. Sleep is basically the same, but all of a sudden work is not as stressful and the weight just kind of melts off. So stress can be a factor as well. So check yourself, like, are you very stressed right now? Your body might not be in a good state to lose weight, accept it, keep controlling the inputs. And when that stress is relieved, if you can relieve it or it just kind of goes away naturally, then you're gonna to start to see the scale move as well. Moving down from there, once you've checked off, are you sleeping, are you managing stress? What are your macros like? Are your, is your carbohydrate and fat intake in alignment with your activity level throughout the day? Is your protein intake adequate for recovery and also muscle sparing? Are you eating enough grams, 0.7 to one gram per pound of body weight per day? So make sure that your macros are aligned, from your, your, or aligned with your goals. And now this is a bit of a more advanced strategy, but similarly to the weight training, if you find yourself at a plateau, it might be time to take a diet break. And the reason is this, as we begin to lose weight, our metabolic needs are reduced because we are one, losing weight, becoming smaller. And also our metabolism is, is reduced in need because we're intaking less food. 
we may get to a point where our body starts to equalize even at a lower calorie intake and we might stagnate. So you're not even eating a lot, but you're still not losing weight. It's not a good place to be. So depending on how advanced you are and how much muscle and body fat you have, anywhere from 10 to 16 weeks into a nutrition program, it might be a good idea to take a diet break. Now, a diet break can take many forms. It could be a cheat day, a cheat meal that pushes a day's calories over, or it could be a week off. Traditionally with clients, I'll either implement a day where they can go above their calories up to maintenance, right? So if they're in a deficit, they can eat up to maintenance for a day once a week. Or sometimes when we get further in the diet, it's good to take a whole week where we go back to maintenance. Now, it's important to note that this is not a free for all where you can just eat everything you want for the week. It means that if say your deficit was 1500 calories and your maintenance is 2000, you've been eating 1500 every week. Now for this one week, you're not going to eat 3,000 a day. You're just going to go back up to 2,000 for seven days and then back into your deficit like that. Same thing for the once a week day. The, the day off, the diet break is not a 5,000 calorie binge. It's 500 calories above or just 20%, right? So that's diet breaks that can be implemented as a strategy if you're in a prolonged period of diet and you're stagnating, right? Now, remember, weight loss is about energy balance. So we can get into a calorie deficit by reducing the amount of food we eat and also increase that negative energy balance by moving more. So if you're sedentary all day, you go to the, you train like four days a week in the gym, but otherwise you don't move, add some walks into your day, 30 minute walk in the morning, 30 minute walk at night, or 10 minute walks after every meal are a good way to get some extra steps after moving in, add an extra light workout in. And lastly, if you're not already, which if you've ever tuned into me or we work together, you of course already are, but lift some damn weights. You need to implement strength training into your routine to make sure that you are maintaining the muscle mass in that deficit and also stimulating some of the hormonal and metabolic processes, processes associated with weight training and weight loss. So make sure that you're doing resistance training. Don't just hammer the cardio. A little bit of cardio is good, but you don't need to go overboard with it. Make sure you're still tra strength training in that weight loss um, phase as well in the plateau. So that's weight loss. Now, Last one, say that your goal is to gain muscle, right? And you don't want to be like our guy second from the, uh, the left over here who's just not looking like he should be on stage with the, the rest of his friends. So we want to make sure that we are gaining adequate muscle. And what can happen is our body basically wants to stay the same, whether it's weight loss or weight gain. Our body is programmed to try to stay the same. Homeostasis is when the body maintains sort of a balance or equilibrium. And we're trying to get it to do something even harder than lose weight. We're going to try to have it build new tissue or new muscle mass. So pr uh, plateaus are very frequent in gaining muscle. So there's a few things that you can do to sort of bust through that plateau. One is make sure that you're increasing your training intensity or volume because our training, our weight training is the on switch for muscle growth, right? When we train, we put our body post-training into what's called an anabolic state, which is a muscle building state. And then we sleep, recover, and we fuel it with food. And the repair process increases the density of our muscle fiber. We get bigger hypertrophy. You can flex on everyone, right? And look like one of the other guys in this picture. So one thing that you can do is kind of turn that on switch up a little higher. So you can increase the volume, which means extra workouts or extra sets, or you can increase the intensity of the workouts by lifting heavier within the same volume or doing things like sets to failure, forced reps, things like that, that are going to really take that growth into the growth switch up a notch like that. That's in the gym. Now you may get to a point where you've been, you know, training super hard for a long time, but you're under eating. You're not providing enough raw material to the body to repair and recover. So make sure that you are in a calorie surplus. So I hate to say it this simply, but eat more, right? You should be tracking your calories. You should be at least 20% over your maintenance calories, but you may have already gained weight in the, the muscle gaining phase or in the, the, the bulking phase as some people call it. So you're going to have to add additional calories on top of that 20% because your energy needs have increased. So same thing as with weight loss, where you're backing off by 10%, you're going to add 10% each week until you start to see the scale moving upwards again. And again, in a, in a muscle gain phase or a bulking phase, you're looking to gain 0.25 to 0.5% of your body weight per week. That's sort of a, an, a band of acceptable weight gain. So you're not putting on too much body fat. Now, if eating more doesn't, doesn't do enough, 
you need to make sure that you're sleeping, right? Because a lot of our hormonal benefits come from sleep with testosterone and growth hormone levels increasing and muscle repair taking place um, during sleep in large part. So are you sleeping enough? Are you getting the recommended seven to nine hours? If you're getting seven, eight might be the, the tipping point for you. Or if eight, you're getting eight, maybe you need nine. So think about increasing your sleep. Another thing like we talked about before, if you're deep into this training block, you've been gaining weight consistently for like 12, 16 weeks, you may just need some time off from the gym. That doesn't mean time off from your diet necessarily, but time off from training. Just let your body recover, take that week off and come back into the gym. I promise all your muscles aren't going to go away if you take one week off. And then lastly, one option is to cycle your calories. So you can have days where you eat quite a surplus, so 30% or more, and then days where you eat less of a surplus or even at maintenance, varying it depending on your energy, energy needs for the day. So it's just stimulating the body in a different way, responding to training and kind of calibrating it in that training response like that. So these are the few of the strategies that you can implement if you're plateaued in your attempt to gain, uh, gain muscle, which is, can even be trickier, believe it or not, than fat loss. So we're all going to hit plateaus. Psychologically, we have to remember to stay the course continue with your inputs, consult with your coach, right? Have that support system. Hey, what's our plan, right? When we hit this plateau, what are we going to do? Ask those questions. Hey, like what strategy are we going to implement? How are we going to get through this plateau together, right? You should know the plan as well. Your coach is facilitating the plan, but you're the one who has to deal with the psychological stress of being like, Hey, like I'm working super hard and I'm not losing weight. What are we going to do about it? Right? No one has a magic wand. There's not a single answer. It's a, a moving target at all times, but that communication with your coach is key to understand that, hey, we have a plan. We're going to try this and that doesn't work. We have another plan and we're just going to keep working until we get the output that we want. So I hope this has been helpful in getting you through the plateaus. Remember, if you ever have any questions, please send me a text, send me a DM, send me an email, send me a smoke signal. I'm happy to help you. This is what I love to do. I, help, I love educating people about all these all things health and fitness and, and implementing it into your life. So please reach out to me.